A few generations ago, the fishermen fished many, many species. Now in Maine, they fish one species primarily, and that's lobster. And if that collapses, what do they have to fall back on? Do they have to go to the city and work in a factory? We're trying to actually prove that this invasive species, which is a problem now, can actually be used to benefit fishermen so that they continue their lifestyle uh, on the water. This is where it all starts with capturing the crabs. One of the keys to this whole process is the sorting. The ability to recognize when a crab is pre-molt. There's sort of um, this darker line that appears on the edge of all these platelets on the bottom. That's the new shell starting to grow underneath the old shell and they're separating. So that sort of shadow region appears. You can see it on the edge of each one. That is the art of being able to molt crabs, is being able to deck detect the signs of molting and where they are in the stages of molting. They hide when they actually are going to molt. They hide in the seaweed. So you have to catch them several weeks beforehand and say, ah, they have the initial molting signs. So um, I am trying to determine um, some of the population characteristics of green crabs. Really get a handle on when the season is when we see molting or when we see the signs of, of the pre-molt crabs start showing up in the population. When we see a peak in that and when we see it start to decline, that would translate into any sort of um, seasonality for the fishery that may one day be created from this um, to kind of get a little bit of, um, you know, the effort um, that would have to go into this um, in terms of what a fisherman would have to catch in terms of raw poundage of crabs in order to make X amount of, or not even make X amount of dollars, just produce X amount of soft shell crabs. Because those are all things in order to create a fishery that you need to know going into it so that you can actually tell a fisherman that yes, you can go out and make money at this, you know. And we have a number of cages down here that are holding crabs that are about ready to molt. And I'm going to check through them and see if any of them have molted in the last 24 hours. Oh, there's one right there. You can see it's the exoskeleton that where it has molted. And there's the crab. Okay, so here is the shell it just came out of. And it crawled out backwards, out of the back of the crab. See how it's empty? The price at certain times is as high as $45 a pound for molted crabs. And on the average, about $25 a pound for molted crabs. That's a pretty good price. And with what we're trying to do is figure out how to use the crabs that ha don't have molting signs to produce crab mints, which is like crab meat uh, in, in an industrial process, then you have two revenue streams. So at this point, we're just trying to prove that this can be done. Then we want to scale it up and try to prove that it can be done economically. I know that my Venetian fisherman, after this year's season, bought himself a new Alfa Romeo. <laughs> We will be taking these soft shell crabs to Salt Pine Social and she will be dredging them in a, in a little bit of very fine batter and then deep frying them and then we'll be eating them. And they're absolutely delicious. There are people who say they, the meat is sweeter than blue crabs. I think they're fabulous. I love eating them. That's the whole reason I started this and when I was eating them in Venice and saying, well, why are these guys eating them and we're not? So really, that's why I'm doing this is so I can eat more of these guys.